In mathematics, the square root operation is the opposite of squaring a number. To square a number, you multiply that number by itself. To find the square root of any number, you need to find the number that when multiplied by itself squares equals the original number. The symbol for a square root looks like this. This is a square root symbol. This is a squared symbol. Square. This is how we would write a number squared. You would put a number here and square it. So for instance, if I grab my pen, if I want to do 9 squared, it would look something to that nature. Multiplying that number by by itself, to itself. So 9 times 9 would be 81. Square root. To find the square root of any number, you need to find the number that, when multiplied by itself, equals the original number. The symbol of square root looks like this. <clears throat> and you need to find the number that, when you multiply it by itself, equals the original number. So, for example, if I have the number 81, and I want to find the square root of that, I think what number times what number equals 81? Well, what I decided was it would be 9 times 9 equals 81. So the square root of 81 would be 9. A perfect square root is a number whose square root is an integer. So, the square root of 4 equals 2. Just, just like we said in the previous slide. 2 times 2 equals 4. So, the square root, the square root of 4 would equal 2. So, just remember, a perfect square is a number whose square root is an integer. <clears throat> integer is a number that is not a fraction or a decimal. So, not a fraction or a decimal. So, I have 4.3 and I X'd it out because that is not a whole number. It's not an integer because it's a decimal. So, I'm going to X it out again because that is not an integer. I have one half is a fraction. And like I said before, integers have to be a whole number. It cannot be a decimal or a fraction. So that would be non-integer. So it is not a fraction or a decimal. The square root of 25 is equal to 5 because 5 square or 5 times 5 equals 25. <clears throat> Another example. 5 squared equals 25, just like I explained it up to there. Another example would be 121 is equal to 11. Well, we know 11 squared is 121, or 11 times 11 is 121. The square root of 121 then would be 11. An imperfect square. An imperfect square is a number whose square root is not an in integer. It's imperfect. So for example, the square root of 3 is 
When finding the square root of these numbers, the answer will not be an integer, but will be a fraction or a decimal. So a number whose square is not an integer. So remember, an integer has to be a whole number. It cannot be a decimal. It cannot be a fraction. So the square root of 3 is a decimal. So therefore, it is an imperfect square. These all would be imperfect squares because the square root of 5 equals a decimal. 2 and 2 tenths equals a decimal. And 2.236 equals a decimal. When it equals a decimal, it cannot be an integer, therefore it's an imperfect square. The square root of 27 is equal to 5.196. The square root of 215 is equal to 14 and 2 thirds. Because they are a fraction and a decimal, therefore it's an imperfect square. It cannot be an integer because it's a decimal and a fraction. To determine the square root of an imperfect square, you can use a calculator. However, you can also estimate the square root of a number without a cal calculator. <clears throat> Calculators are friends when we, when we do square roots. But like I said, we do not always use, we don't always need to use a calculator. There are five steps in finding and estimating the square root of a number over to at least two decimal places. So like I said, you don't always have to use a calculator, even though calculators are friends. But there are five steps in order to find um, the decimal to two places uh, for the square root. So five steps. Step one, so <clears throat> let's say for instance, we have the square root of seven. The very first thing we have to do is determine which two perfect squares um, your number falls in between. The answer you're looking for will fall in between two numbers. So for instance, in between a square root of 7 could be the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Step 2. Step 2, remember, we're trying to figure out the square root of 7. So here's the square root of 7. Here is the square root of, uh, we said before, square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Now I'm going to take a guess about the number just after the decimal place. So I'm going to say the number would be 2 and 3. So I'm going to say if it's in between 2 and 3, I'm going to say it's 2.4. So next, you are going to divide your uh, answers, uh, these two numbers together. So if I'm going to go 7 divided by 2.4, when I do that, I get the answer of 2.92. Step 4. So I just divided in step 3, 7 divided by 2.4, and I got the answer of 2.92. 2 
Once I do that, I have to find the average between your guess and the number to the division problem you did in step three. So, for example, that would be 2.92 plus 2.4 divided by 2. When I put that in, my answer would be 2.6. Six. <coughs> and lastly, step five. Repeat steps three and four until the two numbers you're averaging are the same. It needs to be the same. Once again, it needs to be the same. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. But once again, make sure you follow these uh, simple guidelines. And we are going to do several practice problems so that you are able to understand what is asked of you.